This is the Real Estate Guide to Success video series. I'm Vance Poindexter. This is Ronnie Adams. Mm. Today's episode is all going to be about flipping. We're going to go through exactly one of Ronnie's um, flipping episodes mm. from start to finish, what he did, why he did it, and hopefully it'll give you something that you can use going forward. So, uh, uh, flipping. One house that I had, uh, this was after the I had purchased a bunch of properties. Okay. So, of course, um, I had about 40 or 50 rentals that I had. I just didn't want to rent no more. Mm -hmm. I was like, you know, I got enough. You know, you had a steady a stream of income coming in, you know, uh, and you're going to get to a point when you're renting, you're like, okay, that's enough. You know, I don't really don't want any more. But when the market started going up, you know, seven, eight, mm -hmm. ten years ago, then what happened was that the prices increased so much that the rents they did kind of stay with it, but then you got out of the range of what the rents were that you wanted to be at. Where I was renting houses for a thousand, twelve hundred bucks, I could buy houses now because I had reached that level mm -hmm. that I could buy houses where I would have to rent them for three thousand. Oh, you know, and I was like, I don't want to get into. That's a totally different market at that point. Okay. So I said, well, with that market, those homes, I could actually sell them and make a hundred thousand dollar profit at that time okay. so i said okay and this is in south jersey this is in south jersey yes yes, okay. yes 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 but so, the process is the same it's the same you know and uh different places of course the profit margin would be different because right. of how much you could sell the house for right so what we ended up doing or what i ended up doing was i said okay now i'm going to move into the flipping market okay so i would purchase a house with the thought of flipping, I'm not going to keep this house. Gotcha. So I would, but what I started thinking before I even purchased it was I already have the loan or I was paying cash for it, you know, but I already had the financing ready to go. Meaning you already had a relationship with the mortgage company. With the mortgage company or, or with the cash, bank or, or I had cash. Okay. So, you know, I now... One property, I might do cash, but if I found another one, I knew the mortgage company was ready to go. Okay. You know, so I could purchase that one, too, and just keep it until I get ready to do it. But what I needed to do was I needed to out to get out this property. So okay. that means I need a buyer. Sure. So what I would do was I went to friends who I knew that were looking to upgrade or whatever like that. And okay. said, okay, well, then, you know, come look at the house I have. Now, what I would give them as an incentive was... I will purchase or I will pay some of your closing calls. So they didn't have to come up with a whole lot of money out of pocket. Oh, wow. okay. So what I'm thinking is, okay, I can purchase this house for X amount of dollars. I can, it's going to cost me X amount to fix it up because I already had my plumber, electrician, my, 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 my cabinet people already had them ready to go. So, cause I would totally strip the house. And when I say strip, of course, the walls are still there. Sure. So, but we would have new bathrooms, new kitchens, carpeting, new carpeting, yeah. new painting, everything. So, when the person walked in the house, they it's were like, "Oh, it's brand new." Yeah. So, uh, so I knew how much it was going to cost me to fix it up. I knew how much I could sell the property for because the person I was selling it to happened to be someone I knew, and I took them to my mortgage company. Oh, so, cool. when I took them to the mortgage company, I'm going to find out how much they qualify for. Okay. Now. You know, I've always been be honest with people, sure. you know, and let them know that, look, I don't do this just for the, you know, just for helping you, which is, you know, a reason that I do it also, sure, sure. but I'm into it for a it's profit. Business. It's, it's business. business. So I let them know that this is what I'm going to sell you the house for. Now, I'm going to pay this much on your closing costs. And so you're going to get into the property with little to no money out of pocket. Right. If you were to go to someone who's selling the house down the street, yeah. then you're going to pay, if you don't pay the same, you're still going to pay the closing cost. Sure. So now you have to come up with $20,000 out of your pocket, yeah. where with me, you don't have to come up with hardly right. anything. Good. You know, so the person was more than happy to buy it sure. or whatever like that. So uh, again, I knew how much I was buying it knew how much I had to fix it up, knew how much I sold it for, and I also knew how much I had to back off my price so that, or back off my profit so that I can get their get closing in. costs in yeah. there. Okay. So I would make on the average 50 to 100 grand. I already knew that back right. then. So I was purchasing the property just for the sheer fact that I was going to be getting rid of it. Okay, so 
you were able to, and you said, I think this was a bank owned property. We had some bank owned, yes, yes, that was a bank owned property. Okay. You know. So you were able to secure a um, somebody to do the purchase. Mm -hmm. You were able to use existing relationships through the mortgage company to kind of help them out and get mm -hmm. them affiliated with them, plus secure the profit that you needed yeah. in the end yeah. um, instead of having to go ahead and rent it again. Yes, 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 because the rent would have just been too high, you right. know. Uh, you don't have, you have a lot of people out there who could pay a thousand dollars a month. You don't have a lot of people who's paying twenty five hundred. Well, again, I, I think it, it depends on what market you're in, right? I mean, if you're in Southern California, well, exactly, right? exactly, right. yeah, people yeah, will yeah, pay yeah, much, much, much yeah, more yeah, in New York. Yeah, yeah, pay yeah, more yeah, more. yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. So for the area that I'm in, correct, you know, then we had to, we were starting to reach the top level of what the rents were. So it made much more sense to be able to sell the house, and you could get rid of that house within a month at that point, you know, at that time. You so, know. let me ask a question. The, the skills, the experience, the knowledge that you need to be able to flip homes, it sounds like the same amount of skills, knowledge, and experience that you need to buy and rent. The only difference yeah. is you're just shortening that time. That yeah, that you right. actually are holding the property. Right. I would say that if you're looking to flip a home, like say some, some people don't want to rent. You know, right. I don't want to get no into tenants. no tenants or stuff like that. Then you can purchase a house for, for the sale. The only thing is that the learning curve at that point is 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 much is shorter because you every time every month you hold on to that yeah, house, there's, there's money. money that you're putting out of there's your pocket. Money, right? You know, when you have a rental property, then I can throw somebody in there real quick. Now remember this too. If you buy a property that you're looking for to sale and only to sale, it may not be a month or two months. Yeah, so it may have, you might have to hold it for six months. Right. Now, what are you doing in that four-month period that now the house is already done, you got the loan on it, because most people would need a loan, yeah. and you're paying taxes, mortgage Rich. payments, electric bills, yeah. water bills, because you can't show the house with no electric on sure, you know. Sure. So... Uh, you may get to six months and say, oh, no, I can't, I can't flip it, you know, yeah. so now I got to rent it. So once I rent it at that point, I've lost money for those four or five months. If I, now this is just me, but if I rent it first and I learn my, my learning curve over the rentals, then I have these rentals bringing in cash gotcha. that can pay for Offset that it. house to sit, you right. know, and Offset that's what, that exactly, well, exactly. I think another thing you just mentioned is really interesting, you know, if you decide to get into flipping, mm -hmm. right, you may have to hold it for a period of time. Yes, yes, so yes. So flipping might not be the best option mm -hmm. unless you are pretty sure you can mm -hmm. move that property yeah. within a certain time yeah, period. Within a certain time period. Or you know that I have enough money to, to wait to cover it, you know, and to wait out there. Because once I sell it, then the profit that I'm actually going to get, and see, this is what people have to look at too. I always say, hope for the best, but plan for the worst. What if the money that you think that you're going to make, you don't make? Yeah. Because a house, and especially during these times, a house is only worth what someone else well, is willing okay. to pay for it. You know, even though you can go to a realtor and they can say, oh, this house is worth this. Well, guess what? There's a whole lot of banks that are holding on to a whole lot of homes yeah. that they say is worth a whole lot of money. <laughs> you know, and really, again, that house is only worth what someone else is willing to pay for it. Our viewers, you have to remember that the market has changed, so everything has to change along with it. You know, the way that we look at being investors, we have to change also. Now, we're giving you um, tactics that will work throughout the whole thing. You know, whether it's a good market, bad market, or whatever, they're going to work. But you have to tweak them a little bit just when we're in different types of markets. And the reason I just brought that up is because, I mean, everybody looks at the television and they say, mm -hmm. oh, I can make millions flipping. They do it on HGTV, mm -hmm. they do it on DIY. Flipping mm -hmm. is the way to go. Yeah. Well, you know, it depends on where you are mm -hmm. and it depends on how easily you can get rid of the property, mm -hmm. right? Yep, um, yep. You, you don't want to get caught in the middle where nope. you have to ca nope. cover the cost. And the only thing is, when you look at those shows, pay attention to when they say that they actually sold it. A lot of times, you never hear about them selling it. 
they'll be showing it. Yeah. You know, they'll say that we are looking to make this amount of profit, you know, whatever, whatever. But a lot of times you don't see the actual sale. And right. if you do see the actual sale, then they don't tell you, well, how much was the realtor fees? Right. It you is. know, I'm yeah, come back exactly. Because what right. they'll say is we purchased it for this. We put X amount of dollars in and we sold it for this. Well, then they say, oh, we made $20,000. But a lot of those homes that you see, they were selling them for like, you know, because I've seen the HDT. They're doing California, yeah. you know. So they're selling them for $400,000, you know. So, but when you got all said and done, it was only like a $50,000 profit. Right. Remember, they paid 6% right. of the 400000 you know. Like so that. now you take that off of your fifty grand, they walk away with whatever, a whopping three grand, you know. Yeah. So was that worth it at that point, you know? It's all because they're looking for you to look at their show. Right. So, I mean, flipping does work. You've mm -hmm. done it. You've had yeah. success. Yeah. So you yes. wanted to make sure you had the information to know how to do it, how to analyze the profitability, mm -hmm. and how to take in consideration different factors that might influence how you go about doing most it. Most definitely, most definitely. Just right. be careful. All right, man, appreciate it. Oh, not too bad. Thanks. All right.